I can picture what you're thinking of My imagination's not enough Oh, who's not safe to say What you're always looking for Hey, someone to make you feel like that Don't wanna think of all the rules That you can pick and choose All right, that's probably good enough. I get my buttons working again for a uh, little stream deck. So I can like be doing the work and then click on the thing and just go uh, and make that magically work. Uh, let's put that over here. So we can see things, let's see chat, let's see what's going on. Looks like everything's working. Still like, I, so I don't use headphones uh, when I'm doing this, so I can't actually hear the audio of me drinking uh, and my chair squeaking. I really like this chair, but I, I recognize how much noise it makes when I'm doing the stream stuff. Uh, so it's, it's kind of funny. It's amusing to me anyways. It's also chiller in my house and I recognized uh, when I got up and so got the heat actually on now. See how that goes. Uh, so playing around with the Google FUBAR code challenge. Um, I, I got this. So I got this when uh, when you go into Google, sometimes you get this little code challenge thing that pops up. I got it once a while ago and I actually messed up and closed it before I felt like I was screenshotting it and like us around like, oh, what's this? And then closed it before I like logged into it. So I got it again. So I've actually logged into it now so I can actually, you know, do it. Uh, it's a recruiting thing that Google does. Uh, foo bar with Google that you got to get the invite to it or whatever. Um, and so basically if you it looks like if you just Google a whole bunch of programming stuff over time, eventually one of them will trigger and you'll get it. Uh, at least that's what happened to me. So I, I Google a bunch and that's actually what it's saying. Um, but the, the task that I've been given for the first one is, and I've got six days to complete it, which it won't take nearly that long. Uh, in fact, I could have, I probably could have done it last night uh, on stream other than the fact that I was really kind of messing around with it. Like I'm playing around with this as, as a fun little, experiment like I'm not there's no jeopardy or intensity or any of that stuff on this for me like it's just it's I'm looking at this as fun little projects to do um to see how far I make it in this process on the like I'm not looking at the like the recruiting thing or whatever like how many of these I can do because I expect that some of these challenges will get to the point where you it's probably pretty heavy computer science stuff so I'll see if I can figure those out. I just want to see how many of them I can figure out. Basically is what it amounts to. And I want to figure them out or I want to do them like in. I don't know, in interesting and fun ways. I don't know. I got nothing. Like this first one is you, you need to create a list of prime numbers. And so I figured out and I, I'd, I'd heard about this before. Or I'd seen it before and, and kind of went and re looked it up like the sieve of 
Civ of this person. Erythosothenius. Erythosothenius? Erythosothenius? Uh, it's a neat, like, it's really, it's cool. Uh, you go through and create a list of numbers that you want to, like, run through and check for primes. And you start with two, and then you go every other number. Or so you do whatever the number is that you're checking, times two, times three, times four, times five. So you basically keep bouncing through it, and you scratch off the numbers that it makes, right? Because those numbers are then divisible by two. And then you go to the next available number, which in this case is three, and then you go three times two, which is six, times three, which is nine, times four, which is 12, and you scratch those off. And then four isn't available when you finish. So when you finish the list, you bounce back to the start, you find the next available one. Four isn't available because you scratched it off with two times two, scratched it off four. So then the next available number is five, and then you do five times two is 10, and times three is 15. And so you keep going to that. And then once you get to the point where there are no numbers that, yeah, so the next number not crossed out because seven, the step would be to cross out seven and seven. Yeah, so seven times, so all the numbers of seven times two is 14, that's already crossed off. Times three is 21, that's already crossed off. Times four is 28, that's already crossed off. So like once you hit the numbers where all of the numbers are crossed off, you are, that the set that you are left with is all the primes. And so I've been messing around with my, and like this stuff exists. Like I could go copy and paste this somewhere else, but I've been messing around with, a, with my way to do this, um, which is again, just a fun little, like it's a fun challenging exercise to see what you can come up with. So I'd, I'd actually been doing before I got this and what I actually the Google search that I did that triggered this was I was doing some advent of code stuff, which is the same thing. It's just code challenges that you go through and see how you do them and work it as a little, as a small little unit of work that you can do and as a puzzle. So I was doing the advent of code, then this triggered. I'm like, ah, I'll do this one. Um, Cause why not? Also like, I think the advent of code is going to be there longer than this one. So, and like, this is like a Google thing. So like, we'll see what happens. The, so I got, I, I made some progress last night on it and let me see, I actually don't remember where my progress is because my brain doesn't always keep up with stuff like that. But so I've got, so I've got the, I've got the list working that gives me the prime. So this is, this is the algorithm and I'm not yet. So I've got some stuff hard coded in here in terms of like the number that I'm shooting towards. And kind of the reason I'm going to be doing that is the next thing. That, so the the way that you do this, and I guess we should just read the thing. Uh, Re-ID. So it's funny. They've got this little like console set up that is a few Linuxy commands or Linux commands. Uh, let's see. Cat readme. Yeah, so basically what you need to do is you make you make a string that is all the primes or n number of primes just concatenated together. So first prime is two, next prime is three, so you get 23, and then 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, etc. And then you... And then the... The way that you work it is now every minion must draw a number from a hat. So they give you a random number or they the the their test gives a random number to your function. And then you use that number as the starting index of where to start pulling an ID number from. And with that, you just start with that index number and then grab the next five numbers or the next, I guess the next four numbers. You're grabbing a total of five. Yeah, it's, it's, this is actually a weird thing. So it says the minion's new ID number will be the next five digits in that string. And it's kind of weird because it's really the index plus four. And it's actually kind of like, it's good that they have examples down here because like the wording of it's just a little bit weird. Like, cause it, it really is the index that you're, that you hit plus four. It's not 
the next five digits after the index, because that would be if index zero in their example gives you two, three, five, seven, one. If you did the index and then you did the next five digits, you'd actually get three, five, seven. You'd start with a three instead of with a two. So it's just it's it's worded a little bit weirdly. Like I would have I would have actually done it differently if it wasn't for these examples based off the wording. Uh, so it's good that they gave you test cases. And so that's that's it. So now what I need to do. So I've got the like I've got the list of the primes. Now I want to do the concatenation. And this is where I was messing around last night with how I wanted to do it. Because what would have been cool is or one of the things that I was trying to do was or I wanted to see if I could do and I it didn't I couldn't get it to go or it ran into some issues is you could start with six seven so you could start with a list of primes just as like an array or sorry a list in Python of the numbers. And then you could go through and you could run the algorithm scratching things off and you'd automatically scratch off. Um, and this would need to be strings to do the concatenation. Do, 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 do. But you could run through the algorithm and come up with oh yeah change some settings on my keyboard so it's gonna like potentially it's gonna be better but also it's gonna be weird I right, change some key mappings on my keyboard again um because that's I'm still looking for the right way to do that like arrow keys like if it wasn't for the if if it wasn't for the arrow keys everything would be fine but the arrow keys still haven't figured out on this keyboard because there aren't like direct arrow keys but so what you could do is you could run through the algorithm and then you would scratch off four and you would scratch off six as you go through the algorithm and you'd be left with a list with only the numbers in it. And then you could just do a join across this that would give you the number that you were looking for. And then from there, you could do a comparison of the length of that number and figure out if you need to go through and add some stuff. Add, because the, the string needs to go up to Commander Lambda has a lot of minions, so the value of n will always be between zero and 10,000. So you need to have an index of 10,000, and then you need to have the number have like an index of 10,005, because you need to be able to push past the index, or actually I guess 10,004. So like you got to target in on the specific number. You, ne you need your Basically, you need your string to be that long. So 10,004. And so I wanted to go through and, and run a process that generates, you know, because you want to go through and basically generate that process dynamically or generate that that string dynamically. Uh, and so that's how I was going to do it, it. Or that was one of the ways I was looking to do it was you could just concatenate this and you can keep looking at the length. And as, whenever the length is less than whatever, you keep doing it. But the concatenation, somehow this didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is why. So I want to wait, wait, wait. So let's see. And I've got a like, there's a way that you could do this a little bit more straightforward with just using a while loop and just kind of like plugging stuff in and hitting an index and going through and that that would work uh that would be fine uh the this is just a little bit of like how like what would be a neat way to do this so that's what we're working on and so if i went through these primes again and really what i want to do so identify non primes so this is this is what looks for any of the non primes for check num and range of 2 times the match number through 21, 
stepping through match number. So we look we look for 2x whatever the number is because the number itself is, is going to be a prime. You want to get all the multiples of that at 2x. And then we're going th through 21 because I just set up a, a number there. That's fine. And then the match number is the step. So that gives us the, the jump of two every time or the multiple jump every time. And so my current way to do that is we populate an array of just true and false so that we get the indexes. But I want to see, I really, I'm, I'm really interested to see if there's a way to collapse this, to, to populate this array and collapse it down that way. And so I kind of want to try that again. So we're going to do this. Probably primary with numbers. Prime numbers. And so zero, zero and one we know aren't in there. So I'm just like dropping those out to start with. The question is, so let's run through this. It's a list. I, I keep using the word array. So what we're going to do is append the number. And so let's just print it out to start with. There's definitely better ways to do this. but this is the way we're doing it now, so cool. This would actually probably end up being a little bit different. Uh, let's just see what this does. That does nothing. <laughs> Why didn't that do anything? Prime numbers list. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Range two to 21, append initial number, primes append initial number. Aha. Uh -huh. We need to put to the right list. Try that. Okay, now I'm confused. Enumerate prime numbers for index value and value. Oh, if value equals true. So. None of those values are going to be true because that's not how we're doing this one. There's the thing. Yeah, so index is zero and one in value is the thing. Okay. And then... So this is where... Oh, yeah. So this... See, what I was doing was I was grabbing an index where I was looking at the prime array and grabbing the first value that was true, which is the first prime. Which, that works. But what I want to, and I still want to see, so what we could do It would be cool if you could do a regex to match or whatever, but this is that's not how this works. So prime numbers. This is where it go, this is where it goes off the rails, is because you gotta get you need to find a you need to find a number that hasn't been blanked out.
And like you could just you could just continually loop through the array, but like as you move farther in the array, the number of empty spaces is gonna be more and more and more. Yeah, I, that just doesn't I, I still I still don't have a good way to do that. Uh, and I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to come up with one. So back to our original one. Okay, I've, I've taken a run at that a couple times and it, feel, it feels like there should be a way to do that. Doing the collapsing of the array. Because I think that would just be a neat, just like thing to do. And like you could go because like the, I mean the other way that you're gonna do this right is you're gonna go through and you're gonna we're gonna loop through the list, and if it's true we're gonna add we're gonna pin that index which is I, I guess we should just go ahead and do that. Uh, populate prime array. So let's bring all this stuff back in. Yeah, so we're processing through, and then there's our list of primes. And then... Populate the prime array, cool. So then... I'm not sure if I want to test this or not. So I've, I've got a test set up that I've commented out, apparently. It's kind of weird. Because there's only the one thing in it. Test pass, right? So this, this is just getting the list of all the primes and verifying that all the primes are showing up. So nine is not a prime, eight's not a prime, seven's not a prime. Or seven is a prime. So I, I'm basically trusting that I've kind of looked at the list a little bit, but like this is a, this is my test to make sure that the, the the I've got the right set of primes coming in. So then what we need to do is def test uh, prime string. So we need to populate the prime array and then so this is where because hmm. what we need to do is pass a number to this and this is going to be So, okay, yeah, so the identify non-primes, we're gonna be able to just continue matching up. Okay, so really what we want to have is prime string length Hmm. Well, so you could do like, I know the length, but I kind of want to pass the length in. Hey, how's Fubar going along? Uh, it's going, it's fun. Um, like I've got, a uh, like, I've got some, like, 
I could probably do this much easier than the way that I'm doing it, but I'm messing around with it, and it's it's a fun little exercise to see like how uh how I can mess with it, if that makes sense. Like I've tried a couple different ways, or I experimented with a couple different ways to see if I can like collapse arrays down to get like this string of numbers that we need to have that's all these primes. And that didn't work. <laughs> is it fun? It is fun. It's very fun. It's it's fu fubarin fu fubarin fun. I like it. Uh, and so now I'm just trying to figure out like how I want like basically this half of this is how you want to approach it. Uh, and I'm just looking at this as like a fun little exercise to do. Uh, it's the it's like the advent of code. Uh, I'm just looking at it kind of that same little level. Uh, so now I'm trying to figure out how I want to create a prime string which really is probably the first thing that I should have started with, right? So, because the string that I'm going to look for, so let's let's do this. Um, expected equals two, three, five, seven, 11, 13. Um, concatenating a prime number. Yeah, so it, it's actually, what this is looking for is, um a string concatenated of prime numbers so like the primes are two three five seven eleven thirteen etc so you just concatenate two and three and five and seven and eleven and thirteen and seventeen and nineteen and twenty three and so you just you generate a list of the primes and then you mush you mush all those together as a single string as a concatenation uh and then the next step will be to choose an index from there and, and get it. But the, the big thing is generating the string. Uh, so it's, I'm playing around with ways to generate the string. I was like, my first approach is, and it's probably the one I'm gonna end up doing, is just making a list with where the indexes are gonna be either true or false on if it's a prime or not. And then I'll loop through that list and I'll grab for every index, if it's true, I will add that index to the concatenation. And if it's false, I won't. Um, but I was also trying to do it where you actually had a, the the list actually having the numbers in there so that you could just do a join and have it collapse down. Uh, but I couldn't get that to work. Uh, there's ways to get that to work, but I couldn't get it to work quickly and easily using the method that I was trying to do, which is use an index to, to find a particular place. That didn't make any sense at all. Um, this is what I'm going with for now. <laughs> How about that? Um, yeah, the true false one's fun. Um, and so like I'm, I'm pre-populating and I've got, so like this, this first part works. Uh, so here's, here's the list of primes. Um, and then I need to make the string. And part of making the string is I need to identify how many characters to add into the string. So that's what I'm going to work on now. And I'm and I'm also kind of writing tests for this stuff too, because I'm more into tests these days. Uh, so I want to get, because I need to basically put, I could hard code the number that I wanted to get to, but like, that's not the best idea with this kind of thing, right? Um, plus I want to do it dynamically. Uh, so I want to do this particular length, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So length of eight. Uh, results, we're going to just hard code it for a second. Just to make sure we wrote everything right. Self, sort equal, expected, result. All right, so that, nope, failed. What did I do? That's why I do this. Oh, it has no attribute prime strength, All right. Uh, H-I-O-P-Q-R. Def prime string. Pass, I'll just pass it. Run it. Test failed again. What am I doing? It has no keyword argument length. This is why I do this. Step by step. Okay, that's passing. And then here we do results. 
actually, now what we want to do is this. Also, I've changed the bindings on my keyboard, so you're going to see me look down at my keyboard a whole lot. Uh, the list will have fixed length of 10,000. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I could I could hard code. Well, actually, so the list is going to be 10,004 because you need to have, it goes up to 10,000, but then you need the next four digits after that. So if on the off chance that they give you an index of 10,000, you need to have the following four characters uh, in the list. Um, and so, yeah, you could, you could hard code that, but I kind of want to, like, I'm going to do it. I want to build it dynamically. Um, in fact, I kind of need to build it dynamically because when I'm generating the list, I need to, I need to see how long it is. What? I need to build it dynamically. The, the number that I'm sending into it is always going to be the same 10,000 or whatever. Um, yeah, you all just build that list by hand. Yeah. You, you could do that. Um, that sounds like a, not a fun, that's, that's a weekend project that I don't want to do. Um, but so now this should fail because we're not going to return the proper value, right? But if we hard code, this as the return. So the way that I like doing stuff is like this, where I just, I get the test passing to green with like the most bait, like literally hard coding stuff. So that then I've got a backstop to work with and, and kind of work on there. Um, I, so I don't know if I'm going to do it in initialization or not. Um, maybe right now I'm just kind of like getting the process working. And then after that, I'll figure it out. Like, so like right now, um, I'm doing it basically I'm calling it as main and then doing the first thing. Now what they're going to, what they're going to do in their test is they're actually just going to call solution with a number right here. So I'll have to adjust things so that it fires up that way. And so solution will actually be main basically, uh, and then populate that out though. Uh, populate that also, or populate that out. I don't know how to say that word um, or phrase. Uh, but so this, so here's here's the thing, right? We've got prime string. Excuse me. Um, with a length, and so here's where I need to actually do the thinking about this. Cause like I can get the list of primes, that's cool. So the prime string. The string, these are not the best names. It's gonna be nothing. And then, cause really what I wanna do is iterate over this to get, to get the Prime. So really kind of what I need to do. And again, like this length is always going to be the same, but like whatever, like it's, it's just a number we're passing in. So while um, length of the string, my arrow keys are different now is less than length. Million G T H. There we go. Again, my arrow keys are different and I'm still getting used to them. Uh, so then what we're going to do is is concat a thing? No. Is append a thing with a string? No. Does it just do plus equals? I don't remember in Python how you do this. <coughs> also, I don't know where my plus equals is. Um, A, whatever. And then... So this is just making sure I know how to do... Print the string, right? I just want to make sure it loops up and goes up, right? So... I'm not calling that. I'm not running the test is what's happening. So there's our A. So that's given us our string length. And so now what we need to do is tie in. So what I want to do is build the, the array or the list of primes 
and do the concatenation one at a time. So like uh, the idea basically being like, and again, this is a little bit of premature optimization, but still like, I like the idea of you can push any number into it and it's going to generate that number of primes for you uh, or that a length of primes based off that particular length. And I just, and so again, this is, I just want to see if I can do that. Uh, or sorry, I want to see how you can do that. Like, I know how you, I know you can do that. I just want to like solve the problem of it. Um, so what we need to do, and this is going to be gross the first time we do it. And then maybe it will be less gross if we refactor it. So we've got a result. We're pulling down a result. So really what, see, this is, it's a, like, this is interesting, right? Cause how is all this stuff going to, going to tie up? Cause what we, yeah. So what we want to do is right here, we want to fire up. How would you do that? So you would look for, and I'm just trying to see this in my head. So you would look for this loop of the, of the prime arrays and you would keep going. The, the trick is how would you get to the last number? Cause I was looking for an index of true. Oh, but that's interesting. Cause you wouldn't have no, you would have. So we've got a list of all the ones that are true. Oh no, there's a there's a there's a gotcha here. So what I was thinking you could do is keep adding one to the list of the prime array. But in order to do that, you would actually have to go back through and and rerun the sieve to look at to see if that number actually is prime. Um which I don't know if that's a good way to do that or not. But that's, oh, that's interesting. So this is fun. Uh, okay, so that, that wouldn't work out the box, or that wouldn't work. But you could just... So populate the prime array. So you have to rebuild. I think you have to rebuild the array every time. Or you don't have to, but like in order, you have to rerun for every number that you add to the end of it. You have to rerun the process over it. Right. That's right. Okay, so how do we do that? So populate primary. So all we actually all we're going to do is oh, This is fun. I don't know which way to stick this in. Um So there's two things I need to do. I need to I need to update the length of the primary and I need to pull out the indexes of that. So Let's just do this to start with. We're going to hang out with this. So I'm I'm going to have I'm going to have a, a hard coded version of the thing. Uh, of the list. So that's zero, that's one, that's two, that's three. And then for index value in, whoops. 
enumerate primes Whoops, all the keys are different. We're gonna add string of index. And right now I'm just trying to get, I'm not trying to solve it. I'm just trying to get the, uh, I'm just trying to see what this does. S-T-R-I-N-G, S-T-R, let's try that. So I think, I just want to see if this gives me the basics of my string, right? Somewhere down here. Oh, I'm not calling this. This is all gross. I know that. Oh, actually I can just call this. Do zero, one, and two. Oh, yeah. So if uh, we only want to do that if is true, if value equal is definitely in a different place right now. If value is true, that okay. So now we should see two and three, right? So this is how we can go through and actually build the string from the list. which is cool. And so if we populate, and then it's just a matter of populating the list every time. Now, how would you pass the, the number to it in order to do that? Well, so you could do... Uh, I am 100% about to create an infinite loop. Well, length of the string is less than eight right now, whatever we can call that later. Uh, no, let's call it now. No, let's... Okay, this will be fine. Wait. Do we have it? Yeah, we have to pass it in. So uh, there's eight. Okay, cool. While it's less than length... This is, this is going to be gross, but this might work. Um... Counter equals two, because we're going to start at two. So while it's less than length, we're going to populate the array. Oh, I need to pass. I need to pass that in. Okay. Well, if I just do this, what's going to happen? This is all over the place. I recognize and I'm not testing it. This is just like a scratch pad, basically. Populate the prime array, and then for that, we're gonna do that. All right, what happens here? Okay, so that's our list of primes. Two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, that's not our list of primes. Why isn't that our list of primes? Counter two, so populate the prime array. While the length of the string, populate the primary. Oh, because I'm appending every time I call this. This isn't starting. This has to start from scratch.
Again, gross. List assignment index out of range. Oh, come on. Initial number range 2 to 21. Append true. Populate prime array. See, this should populate it every time it fires. We'll take that out. Oh, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> For index, enumerate primes. If value equals true, string plus equals string index. List argument out of range. List assignment index out of range. Primes, check num, false. Why did that happen? So we get our primes. I don't like it when it collapses that space. I want that space there. Don't do that, Patron. So initial numbers. So this gives us everything true. Match number one, match number less than 21. Run all of our stuff. I understand why this breaks here. Shouldn't be because I'm calling this twice, I don't think. No. And if I take this out. It's worth setting this to false. And I don't understand why. Why it matters that we're calling this here because that works but as soon as we do this it blows up why is that because we're setting everything like why is that It's not in prime string. It's not in this. It's in populate array. Oh, am I overwriting? This isn't doing, this isn't adjusting this, is it? as a scoping thing, I'll bet. I don't totally have Python scoping in my head, but I'll bet that's what's happening. I'll bet this isn't. Now, how, how would you do? That then like, cause this has, so as soon as we come in, this gets scoped internally. But how? It's going to be a scoping thing.
Single definition, the first X is defined in only one location. It's outside both F and G, so it resides in the global scope. Double definition, right. The next example, the definition appears in two places, one outside, one inside, but outside G. As the previous example, G refers to X, but this time it has two definitions to choose from, the global scope and the whatever. According to the LAGV rule, the interpreter finds the value from the enclosing scope before in the global scope. That's it. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's it. It's a scoping issue. Uh, which I don't know how to deal with in when not using classes. Um, so we could make a class and then have the class and have the solution call the class. Uh, we could return an array. Yes, this is, okay, this is fun. Like, how, how, this is, this is an interesting one to, to play around with. So what I could do, identify non-primes. Oh, well, when you're, uh, so when you're listing through a new number, you don't have to loop through the whole list. You only have to list, you only have to go through the items that are true and see if those match. Because you already, you've already struck all the other ones, um, which I guess is how that works anyways, but uh, that's it. Just a few minutes, right in the stage, reclassifying numbers. Uh, so no, I'm... I'm going back now and I'm, I want to get, I'm still building on the array or the list and, or I'm building the string, but in order to build the string, I want to incrementally do the, the list of the primes, right? So, and that's, again, the number specifically doesn't matter. Well, I'll pass it in as variable or I can hard code it either way. But like, I was going to try and do I was trying to add to the length and why I just ran into a scoping issue where because I need to when I build the list in order to add one to the list, I actually have to rerun through the sieve again. And so I was going to like redo the list, but I ran into a scoping issue because it call like I'm I adjust this local one instead of adjusting the global one. So I need to extract that out and then just like make it. Yeah, so actually what I need to do is just do this. Um, def primary and then last number is gonna be last number. I'm going to test this one too. So def test prime array. And I know it's a list. I'll call it a list since it's a list. So prime list. And then what we're going to do is expected. So I'm just going to pass a list back. False, false. True, true, false. So that's what we're looking for of going through four. And then result, again, I'm just gonna hard code this for a second just to make sure we've got everything lined up. Nope. I will get these arrow keys back in my head at some point. Um, Can't type anymore. Expected result. So let's just run that and let's we'll verify that that fails. Oh, because I think I'm breaking all the rest of the stuff. Yeah, so this, all this other stuff is broken. Because this is actually going to go away. 
Ta-da, passing. Okay, and then so the result is going to be solution.prime list, which doesn't exist. So it's going to blow up. Cool. P, Q, R, M, and O, P, Q, R. So we need to put this down here. And yes, this is completely all over the place. Uh, prime list. And then... Last number. So we're just gonna return, we're gonna hard code the return to get passing. And then we can actually build the thing. This is this is fun. This is turning out to be a little bit more of a of a thing than I thought it was gonna be. Because I'm doing it in a weird like not in a weird way, but like in a intricate way. I don't know. So last number equals four right because we're going to go through four so this should pass there we go all right so now we get to build this oops so we start with false false And then initial numbers. So you've got a bunch of the pieces of this. Now it's just kind of putting them in place. Two through last number equals true. And then Match number equals one, while match number is less than or equal to last number. Where do you get it? We're gonna identify the non primes. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. And then. So I need to hard code this as four for a minute. I need to pass this in in a second but I want to see what happens here first. I'm still hard coding it, I believe. I am. Uh, return prime list. And let's see what we get. Oh, uh, cause this, oh, see. Cause this is doing it. This is adjusting the, this array. So we actually need to pass in and I've got no idea if this is the right way to do this stuff. Uh, I would. I kind of want to make this a class now. Cause I don't know, like I'm not, I'm not as, I don't know about functional, the functional stuff about how you pass stuff around. Like I know how I've done it in the past, but like, I don't know what the like right way to do it is. Uh, Cause like, this is all scoped. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to make it a class now. Again, this is just kind of all over the place. Um, ID builder. Which is not a good name. 
That's not really what we're doing. So. Definite. Self. So self. Prime list equals. Actually, I'm just going to leave that as a list right now. And again, I'm going to scratch pad all this stuff for now. Am I? No, I'm not. We're going to test it. Starting over. <laughs> Def setup. Global. ID B for ID builder. ID B equals ID builder. Def test tone. Uh, self. Sorry, true, true. Do you get all the rest of that stuff set up right? No. ID builder is not defined. Uh, oh, solution.id builder. That's why we do this. Okay. All right. So the thing that we want, so the, the first thing that we want to have is I should have started on this anyways. Uh, I don't know. Like, I just don't have it in my head where functional, like, where, where you should do global stuff and where you shouldn't do global stuff and functional programming and like all the other things. It's just not, not in my head. Uh, def test prime list self. All right. Expected False, false, true, true, false. Result. Actually, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. IDB prime list. But what we need to do is pass. Well, so this is also one of those things where like what's the right way to, to do this stuff like I don't have I don't have the right coding patterns in my head that I know that there's a bunch of ones that are out there uh, so build prime list and then we're gonna get prime list Build prime list, and really what we want to do is last number equals four, because that's that's what we want to do is to is to get that self assert equal expected result. I know I've got a hotkey for that. I don't know why I'm not using it. Right, so that doesn't exist. Last number. Uh, return. Oh, and actually what we want to do is self prime list equals and I'm just going to do false for a second. So I want to see an array show up that's not equal just to make sure we're, yeah, so here we go. False. And now we're going to hard code this in. So we got something to work with and then we can go from there. This feels better in my head. I can understand this a little bit easier. So build prime list. So the first thing we so the first thing we're gonna do is nuke it.
And then the next thing we're going to do is so I, can, I can compartmentalize and, and can conceptualize this a little bit better. All right, so this should fail because we've got a whole bunch of trues. Well, we got a whole bunch of trues. Why do we have so many trues? Oh, because we're doing 21. We're not doing four. Uh, so we want to go to last num. Okay, this is where you actually get to start putting stuff in. I like this. This is nice. Actual true true. Oh, okay. We got to start this with false, false. And then we want last number plus one because range wants that. And now we should see the same number of things, but we're going to see a whole bunch of trues. Yeah, false, false, true, true, true. False, false, true, true, false. So, cool. We've got the, that's the basic start of it. And here's where we run the sieve. Now, is there a way to... I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're going to. See, this is true. Like, I, I have to rebuild this thing every time. And like, I can't think of a way to not do that. Other than you jump out a large number. And just do it one time, knowing that like making the assumption that your number is so far out. But like, I want it to be programmatic. Um, I don't want to have that hard coded. Could totally hard code it, right? I mean, like, this is one of those, like, do, like, if you know the thing, you can hard code the thing. But I'm interested in the, like, a pure programmatic aspect of this. So that's the, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so match number while match number primes primes. Primes index true, identify non-primes. Is that gonna work? Nope. So it missed. Oh, because it's it's adjusting primes again. Uh, match number primes index is true. So that needs to be this. Whoops, I'm in the wrong place. I got junk all over the place. Check num and range. Yeah, so you've got to... Okay, so that's the process. So we've populated. Now, how do I want to do this? So I, I do want to have that actually. I want to split these out into their own methods. 
Um, just because I like the idea of like small methods. Prepare prime list. Prepare prime list. And actually, I'm going to do this with just a bunch of trues. So it's obvious, I hope. Note, this is not the primes. It just sets all the trues. Right, so what I want to do is just have a whole bunch of trues out there. This, like, I want to create the list, the initial thing, and then I'll go through and parse it and have the, like, I want those as two separate things because we can address them individually. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this should be seven. Let me actually work. Oop. Oh, because I think I'm still calling. So prepare, right? Is that what we called it? Prepare. Test passing. Okay, so we're just making the array first of an array of trues. An array of truth. And see, this is also where I, this whole, I don't know, object thing, like. Stuff, test, um, find primes. So prime list to start with is going to be this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is really seven. And we want eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we want to do this dynamically anyways. Um, Yeah, we want to find the primes in whatever the list is. So the list of the yeah, so the list of the length. Okay, this this makes sense. I conceptualizing these as, as nuggets is a little bit easier for me. Prepare a prime list, and then we're gonna do find primes. So And then this, we're going to change to this. Two, three, four is false. Five is true. Six is false. Seven is true. Eight is false. And that's going to be the prime list. So this is gonna fail because our numbers are all different. Oh, wait, this is gonna fail because we don't have find params yet. A, B, C, D, F, F, find params, primes, prams, primes, whatever. It's all good. Uh, we're just gonna pass. So this will still fail, but this makes us know that we're point into the right place now. Yep. And then so we're going to hard code this for a second just to get the green. And 
Hammer green. Okay. Okay, so now we actually get to do the work. And here is where, so we actually don't need to know. So I don't need to know a match. I don't need to pass in a match number. So this, this all becomes one thing. So can you do, no, I, ah, this is interesting. Can you do, Can you do this? First we spell it right. Like would this loop through the indexes that are there? Index expected at least, oh, you gotta tell it what to look for. I don't, th I don't, th I think this is gonna be an infinite loop because it's gonna, it's gonna keep hitting index. It's gonna keep hitting the first one. Yeah, it's not gonna progress. So this is gonna be infinite. If it runs at all. Index expected at least one. Oh, I didn't do it twice. This is gonna explode or go infinite. That's what I thought. So this is fun. I'm trying to find like little fun ways to play with this stuff. So. And this, this was one that hung me yesterday that I was trying to find a way to not use this exception handling to break out of this loop. And it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's fine. It's an exception. You can like as long as you know it's coming and you can use that as a as a breakpoint, like that's cool. But I was trying to see if there's a way to do it without the exception. Because the way that I'm doing this is I'm looking for the first true value in the array or in the list by using this index. And so you can keep doing that, but the at some point you will likely hit the end of the array, you're likely hit a point in the array where there's no more true values after it. Like if the last number in your array is true or is prime, then you get true. But anytime it's not a prime at the end, you wouldn't get true. And so that's going to work. Um, and you can catch that exception, but I was trying to see if there's a way to do that without doing the exception. And And you could, uh, whatever, you could do it like doing an if or whatever, but I couldn't, I, there wasn't a good way to do it that I found. So. So that doesn't work. That's fine. Uh. For prime index in range of two to length of prime list. See, how did I do this? So I identified non-prime. See, this is where I got to figure out if I want to mush all this stuff into one thing because it feels like I should be able to move this down I 
Because what this is doing... I feel like there's a better way to call this. And I think it's a nested for loop, but I'm not sure how that would work. Because really what you want to have is Yeah, see, it's, it's you need to have this index going to get the start of it. I want to see, like, so I've got I've got an algorithm that works for this, but I want to see, I, I want to think through it and see if there's another way to do this. Um, match number equals two. This is the way that I did it last time. While... Match number is less than or equal to length. So while it's less than the length of the array, you get index starting at the match number. So I want to see if there's... So this is... It's calling itself... This calls itself, and I would prefer to not have that happen. Or I want to see if we can do it all as a as a base pass through. So just Just to do this, right? Uh, and get rid of this. Kind of surprised I didn't print anything. I didn't print anything. Uh, print match number. Okay, so what I want to try and do is... I'm not sure if I need a separate thing for this. Um, self, prime list, Index true match number. That's failed. Oh, that failed all of a sudden. That shouldn't have failed. Why did that fail? Just passed. Okay, that makes no sense. I mean, it will make sense once I figure out what I did, but like right now it doesn't make any sense. Test, pass number, index, true, match number. Is that the problem? That is the problem. True is not in the list. Okay. 
Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so that's that's the problem. That's where you do the try and the catch. Because the last numbers don't have... Well, actually, at this point, nothing has that in there, I don't guess. Um... I'm actually surprised that didn't work. Wait a minute. It's gonna be just less than maybe? Less than and less than equals always throws me. Yeah, okay. Match number is less than the prime list, the length. Right, because the match number is yeah, so that's an index. So it's a it's a off by one or a, yeah it's off by one so check number and really it needs to be match number again and this is where we go through this way so I should be able to I feel like I should be able to put this in here now so this is the process that goes through and make some false That might be a infinite loop. No. Okay. That passed. Did that actually pass though? Oh, wait, prime's check number. So this is the wrong thing. We're doing the wrong thing here. Uh, self, prime list. We're still hard coded. I'm just checking to see if it compiles. It does. Now let's see what happens if we Make it go this way. Fails. So it's not setting stuff properly. Match number gets the true for check number in range of two times match number. True is not in the list. Okay, so that's where we need to have the try catch. There we go. Okay, so that's the that's getting it. Uh, we're back to where we were an hour ago or two hours ago. I like this a lot better, though. This is much easier to deal with. So while match number is less than the length of the prime list. Match number. Yeah, see, the, the only thing I don't like about this and I don't, and I can't, I can't think of a way through it is the fact that you have to, every time, every time you need to add a number to the prime list, you got to build, you got to rebuild the whole thing. How? 
Because really what should happen is you just build it once. Yeah, so I actually, I think I'm gonna try this in a minute. So you should build the first one once. No, you should build it. Yeah, so you could invert this. How would you invert it? Uh, let me get the first one working, and then like, then we'll we'll figure out if we want to if we want to mess with it more. Uh, break match number one plus equals one. Wait, that's bad. We don't want that. This should still work because that was getting broken. Oh no. That is not the case. Uh, wait, that should totally work. Because it's either setting that... Why didn't that work? It's not incrementing. It should be incrementing. You gotta do, okay, you do have to do match number plus one. After, cause, oh yes, after it loops for it, that's cool, I get it. Yeah, so it's going through and it's getting our thing and then it's, it's bumping one up. Okay, that's cool, I got it. Realistically, this can be here. Cool. All right. So we're back to having our array. And now what we can do, so we've got the prepare pilot. And so this is where we can give it the last number. I don't think I need this. Yeah, so we want to prepare the prime list with the last number, and then we get the primes, and then we get the length of the prime list. Or... Er, the f test... Link to the prime list. So, two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. Which is how many characters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, expected is eight. Results, eight. Self, assert equal. Expected, result. Run it, passing, cool. And then what we wanna do is result equals IDB length of Prime 
list. I'm just gonna fail. We're gonna add this in. We have G H I J K L. Dur. Turn eight. That'll pass us. And then we need to do prime list. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, I don't know where that just went. Two, three, wait. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should have done less of these. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that, that'll give us eight in the list. Except where it doesn't. F is not defined. But. Solution prime six. What? What line is this? Empty suite. Show me line number 48. Oh. Somehow it jumped down there and put an F. Okay, so now we want to get to the number 8 off of this. And so we do this. Uh, we're actually close now. For index value in enumerate self prime list uh, if value equals true. Length of prime list. Oops. Still no. Can you append a string? I uh, no. Wait, we, we went through this earlier. Plus equals string index. Print this. I just want to see it grow. got going on here there's a list it's not actually there but like it's there uh cool okay so that that's how we do the list and then we do We're pretty close on this.
Uh, ba, 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 ba. So if we do. IDB? What did IDB stand for? ID badge? ID builder. And then what we need to do is is going to break something because I, I think I still have tests in there to try and call this stuff, but we'll fix that in a second. Uh, get rid of that. Return prime list. That's cool. So what's the actual what's the actual process here? So IDB length of prime list is less than I'm gonna do a thousand for right now. No, not length of prime list. Length of prime string. I should call these different things. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll rename this in a little bit. I'm, I wanna see if I can get this running first. So length of prime list, which is really gonna be string, which we'll fix in a minute. Well, that's less than a thousand. Oh, so here's how we, uh, okay. So we need to populate the array. I have to have a counter that's going to populate the array. Prepare prime list, last number. actually doing this right length of prime list i i need to add that to a string i'm doing i got a little fuzzed up here length of this would actually be prime string okay so let's actually do this I know it's misspelled. I'm going to leave it there for a second. P 
prepare, 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 prepare. All right, here we go. IDB. That might be our list. Nope. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, come on. Oh, last time I prepared Prime List. And then... Find primes. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, bloody, bloody, blah, twenty three. 29, 31, 37. I believe this is our list of primes. That is probably about a thousand characters long. One thousand column one thousand. So that's it. That's the list of primes. That <laughs> that took longer than expected. Uh I feel like I could have done that a slightly different way and had it done faster, but like this was a fun little run. Uh, I need to rename some stuff. I need to clean up some stuff. I got to call it the solution. And then also I have to just do the index thing where you call it. So now, now this is straightforward. So this is like call, call the index, get the next four after the index. Uh, so that should be fairly straightforward to finish up. Um, why don't we go ahead and finish that while we're here? Nah. I'm hungry. I want to eat is the trick. So yeah, I need to rename some stuff. I need to reclassify some stuff or re basically rename and then clean up some stuff of those. And then somewhere in here, identify non primes is not defined. Line 105. Oh. No. 105. Oh, populate prime array. Gotcha. That doesn't need to be called. Whoops. Yeah, whatever. Now, if we run it, we shouldn't see that error. Okay, there's a list of primes. That's it. That's funny. Uh, like that's that's a, a fun one. Uh, and you can throw it in as an arbitrary length of however many primes you want to have. So that was a thousand. So let's uh, let's actually. And so this is this is the trick, right? How how long does it take to generate ten thousand? Because like it's got to go through all those primes every time. And I, I feel like there's a way. It seems like there should be a way to deal with that faster. But like, I don't know how you. Basically how you sieve every every number. Well, I guess what you could do, there's gotta be a way to reverse that. Or to, or to bail on it, right? Cause what this is doing is every time it goes through, it hits 
it checks for a true value and then it checks the numbers after that. And then it goes through the next number and checks all the numbers after that. But like if you add a number that's even, for example, and the two knocks it out, you don't need to go through and test it with the rest of the numbers. And I think that's what's happening right here. Uh, also printing it out is gonna slow it down. Like it'll it'll go much faster if you don't if you throw everything to a variable and then print it back out or whatever. Um, I'm gonna play with this a little bit more. Um, Cause it, it really does feel like if you do, cause if this is doing, Yeah, it's like it's like what you really need to do is go is to look at a number and then do do the division in reverse. I don't know how long that took. There's 10,000 numbers. Concatenated primes. It's kind of funny it has all this like pattern to it. That gets you there. But Yeah, if you if you divided it by Yeah, so you need to, you need to reverse it. Where you would start with, so you'd start with, well, four. And you'd divide by two, and that would hit, basically. And so you'd set it to false. And you go to five, and you divide by two and three. Because you know two and three are prime. Or you can start, you can preload a couple primes. Um, or you could preload two, I guess. And then divide by three, that doesn't work. There's a remainder. You go to four and you divide by two to start with, and you would you would just keep dividing. So this is doing multiplication to move up. You could actually do division to cut down. And so you go to four and you divide by two, there'd be no remainder. So you would slash four and you wouldn't worry about going and, and doing a division by three because you'd already have, have ejected. You go to five, you divide by two, it has a remainder. Divide by three has a remainder. Four doesn't exist. That's the better way to do that, I think. Because then you can go... You're not rebuilding the thing every time. Um, that's a better way to do that. I'll do that next. Because I think that's that's the, the, the better way to do this. And again, like, it's one of those, like, hey, it's fun puzzles. But I want to see, like, I want to see if that, like, that feels like that should work. So we'll see if we can get that to work. I like it. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's going to run it for now. I'll be back on later tonight, probably uh, about 8 Eastern, if not before. And uh, when we'll do it again. And we'll keep going on this and see, uh, see what else happens. So y'all take it easy. See ya. Cheers.